Hello, and welcome to another episode of Twin Tigers Data. My name is Thomas Kissner, and let's get started. Today, we will be talking about not only building your campaign, however, maintaining it and allowing people to just keep coming. First, what's the point of building and maintaining this campaign? It's that then you can get a goal for your players and also keep them on that goal by maintaining it. Uh, so then you're not over prepared or under prepared. Both are major. <clears throat> Uh, problems with DMs. I had them the very first few times I DM'd, and I underprepared a lot of times afterwards that, and that kind of got me screwed over. Being able to deal with sudden turns and de people deciding to backtrack and go back to places that you don't think they really need to go to uh, in the middle of your campaign. So then you don't come with nothing, which is an example of uh, being underprepared, and also keeping your players entertained and willing to stay inside your campaign the entire time. Styles of storyline playthroughs. Now, this means how you're going to set up your game. One style is a is called a side road, which is a vast series of side missions that you can do in the background of the campaign that can deal with a whole deal with the main story itself. Now, another idea of this is the side missions, which is a straight series of events that happen. However, there are a series of side missions that have just about nothing to do with the main story itself. It's like, hey, you're here. Can you do this quick for me? Railroading. Essentially, it's one straight line or storytelling where you tell the players exactly what they're doing more than uh, more than they choose what they're doing. Kind of like taking them more on a, along for the ride eh, than they choosing. And finally, my personal favorite style, the sandbox, which is... A vast series of events that are all happening at once and slowly come down to the boss fight. Consequences of over preparation. Now, you've prepared yourself to do this one thing and continue going for it. They, the players might do something that you have no idea how to handle or they completely derail a story arc by killing off one of your uh, bosses. Uh, so for those of you who are uh, new, get good at improvising the story quickly. Players may end up feeling like, just like the uh, railroad style, that you're just taking them along for the ride instead of they get to choose what they're doing. And it becomes more of a game for you and less of a game for your players for the most part. Unless you're really good and predict 30,000 things. However, that takes about a year before you're good at it. Consequences of under-preparing. That I... Every D player hates the time when they have to essentially pull teeth from the DM just to get one little fight out of them. Come on. Uh, you look like an idiot every time you show up and have nothing to game with. Even if you're great at improvising, you never want to do this. Ever, ever, ever. Please don't. Okay, now. Players can sometimes say that DMs shouldn't do this. Uh, you shouldn't DM in general because you lack the, you, the skills to prepare for a game. Now, one major thing that I always believe in is that you should keep track of events. Now, however, don't write only the major events like... Uh, they meet the NPC that's truly a villain that is actually an ally. Or the complete, or don't write down every single thing like, oh, this player bought uh, three things of food. You don't want to keep track of that. 
make certain to keep track of how your character's relationships between the characters themselves and your NPCs. Now, keep in writing the, the status of your major NPCs. For example, the king of the land, uh, if he's involved, the, oh, say, uh, major villains that you have inside the game, and also on top of that, your uh, allies, your player characters' allies that are involved with the, with the party. Now, know of major things that are changing your players' characters. For example, if they just went through a majorly traumatic event and someone has changed somehow, you want to make certain you keep track of that. Now, before night one, you want to have at least four or five things prepared for the night when you show up to the first game. First thing, you want to have where exactly your players are starting. For example, they start out in a tavern, and then you set up an event that is your players meeting each other. Next, you set up a an event where the players have a reason to go do something. So I got something stuck in my teeth. Anyways, and then you also want a good stopping point. However, in between that reason to adventure, venture, which is a fight to draw them in, uh, a damsel in distress asking for people to call, to take them in, or uh a major guy who says, yes, I'd like you to all join me on this adventure to protect my ass because I am scared that I might be killed. That type of thing. Anyways, uh, you might want to add in another thing, like a fi another fight that actually draws them in if you decide that the first major event is not uh, them fighting, but instead them going to help go save Timmy, which is a reference to one of my previous videos. I like to spoil things, sorry. Anyways, this is a formula that I have used for myself plenty of times, uh, and I've pretty much seen it in all DM's other cases. Now for the rest of your sessions. Look at where you ended up tonight compared to where you wanted to be tonight then base next week off of that you don't however you don't want to uh have nothing prepared so if you say only got through so you had like 10 things set up however you only got through four of them keep the other six and prepare like one or two more uh and then after the first night Continue basing your uh, next week off of all the previous weeks. So say the first night you got through four, the second night you got through seven, and the third night you got through two. So you've only gone through 13 items in three weeks. So your average right, your batting average right now is four things. So you might want to start thinking about what four things are my players going to be going through next week. And don't make these things overly major or overly dramatic uh, for major reasons. Think of your plot progression and where do you want your players in terms of main plot by next week. Now start basing your next week on things that you would allow for their current situation. For example, if you want your players to be able to use uh, certain things, okay then you should do that. However, if there's something that you really don't want them to do, let your players know so then they know prior to. Keep the game fun and understandable. Now, This is the hard part about a lot of DMs. Most of those DMs that have a hard time keeping things fun and understandable are those who like to overdo everything or the person that likes to talk in a monotone voice and goes slowly through every single room 
because there is not even though there is nothing in there because they want the players to make certain they searched every inch see how boring that was i mean come on guys really okay do not make it too difficult for your players by using too much info use the base stuff that's there and then you can add your own little flair to it if you want however that's only if you want now, one of the biggest uh, bonuses of being a DM inside a lot of other games as well, you can use and reuse easy cliches. For example, uh, princess getting kidnapped is an idea. And, however, you want to use them sparingly. So take that cliche and maybe put a spin on it. However, keep some new ideas going every now and then. Have interesting and new plot points. However, don't do stuff that's going to derail your campaign. Derailing essentially means you take your campaign and you screw it over big time. Now, have the game be more about two things. One, character developing development, as in you're developing more than just yourself. Uh, sorry, your character self and your party's sense of knowing the character. And finally, the end game. Where it do you want? Where do your players want to be by the end of this? Do they want to be awesome ruler badasses, or do they want to be humble, nice peacekeepers by the end? Honestly, this would be more your monk, fighter, sorry, your monk, uh, cleric, and paladin groups on the second one, while the first idea was more barbarians, fighters, rogues, and so-and-so. Now, as long as, now, with all this in mind, you should do fine as long as you keep up with everyone's desires and interests. For example, in my 3-5 campaign that I was running, uh, everybody wanted more intelligent items where they were able to use those and be able to say, oh, I can do this. Uh, sorry, I have this magical item that allows me to do this certain thing. Okay, that would be something that your players want, so you want to keep up on that. Have it be more, with me, I had it more of a chance to do it. So instead of a 0.1% chance, I made it a 1% chance. And they actually got some pretty high, they got some pretty decent roll chances for that. I think I gave out like five intelligent items. Uh, also keep your players interested by maybe, say, giving them an unexpected uh, ally. For example, my party had a pet white dragon that was only there because... The party saved her from a burning cart. Sorry, found her in a cart. And however, they stole her diamond, so she's following them mostly to get back her diamond and leave the party. Despite that, the party pretty much is just adventuring with her because they saved her and she owes them. That's the main reason. Now, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And hey, if you want to share my awful, no good, ter very bad videos, go ahead. I don't care. I'm an open book. Please remember to play safe, stay good, and remember, ah, remember to be safe, to be anywhere that is safe when you play. Adios.